Okay, so as far as uh, locking up and hitching up goes, this is the hitch lock. Stop somebody stealing it. There's a little red ball that goes in the where your tow bar goes to stop people using it, and then you get this thing to stop people using the handle. So open this up on the key ring. You want this little silver key, it's got flat on one side. Poke it in there, little quarter turn to the right, and as you can see that pops out and then just sort of jiggle this loose. And eventually that comes off. To get the tow ball out you want to make sure this is open, just in, literally finger sort of loose until it sort of stops and sticks. Lift the red handle up at the back, and then as you lift that up, that drops out, and that's how you undo the tow bar. At this point you can stick this on your car. When you're putting it down on the car, you basically make you need to make sure that this is open and that's up. As you sit it down, this will clip down. Once that goes down, you'll see a little green light here. Then what you do is you tighten this in until it'll click. You'll hear it just go click, 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 and then just stick that down. And then at that point you're good to go. Plug that in and attach the brake. So after you've arrived wherever you're going and you put your caravan on site, unhitch it from your car and then what you want to do is basically level it out so it's nice and flat. So all you do is just sit there and move your jockey wheel up and down until you get it basically about level. At that point you want to start putting the legs down on the caravan. So there's one in each corner. You need to wind these things out. So there's a big spanner in here, which is this thing just wind out each of the four legs just basically until you can't move them anymore and just level it off. So after you've got your four legs down the next thing to do is take the black cover off. If you basically get two people go one either side and then you fold it over so that you can start putting the caravan up. Fold it so it's kind of a triangle like that, and then you can start rolling it up to and hold the camera up. Yeah. And then all you do is there's a little clip up here that folds over and clips down there. Uh, if you do the same the other side. And then as you're going to fold this out, you want to make sure that you don't catch this in, so make sure this is pushed down nice and flat. Just there. Okay. So now if we go to the back, we'll fold out the back one. You need to stretch out the bed, so if you move these clips here, they're at the 6th position, if you move that up to sort of 12 o'clock, pull the bar out and pop them back down to 6 again, and what you need to do is just slide this out until it catches and hold, and it should be about that far, unless your bed's fully locked in place. Now, turn this way. There's a clip on each side here, so we undo this side, do the same on the other side. You've got two of you doing this, this is much quicker, but you can undo that, and then the bed, oh, if you just move that back as well, and as you lift this up, it's really easy, hold that. and then you need to duck under here, pull this bit down, and then all you want to do is just put this velcro strap around the bar, and same on the other side, just velcro that one down. And that's it. Now we repeat for the front. Make sure you always do the back before the front. So undo that clip. And 
the other one. Over we go. Just keep your eye on that, it's not going to catch. As before, just put your Velcro down. There we go. So next we just start pulling the roof down. And then fold all of this. Okay, and at this point we are ready to start putting up the holes inside. So, if you Can you zoom in on the pole a bit? <laughs> you almost want it facing this way. So, each of the poles, assuming that focuses, has these little five holes so you can just sort of stretch the tension. We normally use just the second hole on all of them and that seems to work for us. If you do it too tight you won't be able to velcro the tent down, if you do it too loose the tent's a bit flappy. So just a bit of trial and error, see what works for you when you set it up. So we'll go and put it so that it's in the second hole all the way along. So I'll get Michelle to help me with this. But just do one side. If you get one person on each side, go up together. Okie dokie. So one thing I should have highlighted before is those little white things there need to all be down so that the pole doesn't rub on the side of the canvas here when it's windy. So if you just have them all down and at the back there. So basically there's one on each pole on all sides. They normally fall down so you should be okay. Okay, so now you've got all the poles up, should be looking like this, nearly done. So now what we need to do is we Velcro down the back, so we pop these corners out. As you're popping them out, there's a white sheet here, you want to make sure that's inside again, just to stop it sort of rubbing as you're pulling it over. And then the grey bits here go underneath. So pull the corner out and over. And what we do is, we need to Velcro all along the back here as you're going and it just sticks this bit down so if we do that at the back first and then just repeat the same on the front again make sure the white's sort of inside Go on there. so we'll repeat the same for the front Okay, so you got a white bit on the inside. Over, under. You just get that up. Velcro, all fastened along there. On the final side. So after this we go then back to the back again. We now want to get all these bungees for the back part of the bed tied up. So you pop the first one through here, just through the metal, and it goes onto a little hook there. Take the next one over here, hook it on, and just go along and basically hook them on where they fit. Okay, and that looks like that. So repeat the same for the other three sides. Get back again first. Let's go through the gasket. Oops. Didn't pull my grey under properly. Can you hold that? Just that 
that wasn't pulled through. Put that onto there. Same at the front, this one goes through here. Up under. Here, this is Velcro, just underneath this metal bar is Velcro, so you just fold it up and press it in all as we go along. Make sure the door's done up as you do this so that it closes properly and opens later. Right. So just slide them up under. If you find this bit's too tight, it means you've got the middle pole too high. Side dump, the other side on the other side. So pull along here, tuck it up, just slide along. And there we go. Okay, that's that bit done. So now we'll do the inside. So we should all be good now. We can start going inside and unfolding that. So unzip this. Open up. Then you've got your step here. These are the awning poles. And normally the awning will be there, although I didn't put it in this time. So take the step out. Put that there. Then we'll lift the poles out of the way. Just leave them outside, or if it's raining, you can put them under the end of the bed. I'll pass them to my lovely assistant. So this is what it should look like when it's all packed down. Uh, normally those curtains I fold on the bed, apart from I forgot the last time I'd close this down. So this is what you get. So the first thing we're going to do is lift this piece here, up out the way, and then we can start lifting the wardrobe. So this is the side of your toilet door. So as we lift it up, there's these little clips here, you can use either of these two. There's a little press stud on there, you're just putting it on there, and just takes the weight and saves it dropping on your head. Then we're going to lift this wardrobe up, so you can slide it to the left a little bit, just so that it's clear of this as you're lifting up. Put your hand on the top of the light, and just lift it up. It tinges up, out of the way. And just push there, once it's pretty much horizontal. Slide this to the side. And that just clips onto these runners here, just sort of places on, and then you can slide it over. As we get to this bit, if I just move the curtain out of the way, this is the light plug that's 12 volts. That just pushes into there. Once your wardrobe's close enough, make sure you push it in. And then that makes these lights up here work. If you ever see these lights up here not working, it's because something to do with that plug there. And then just push it over, and that's your wardrobe done. Okay, next what we do, we're going to put the cooker hob onto here, so it sits over these two little white stoppers, so if we just take the cushions that have been packed to stop it getting scratched, and just throw them in one of the bed ends. There's a handle either side here, so we pick that up, and this just places it that, really easy. Done. Then round the back, we've got our gas pipe, so we just, it's got a little clipper there, Pull the gas pipe out, pull it across the back, and then it just goes in there. If you just press it down, you hear a click, and then it won't pull back out, and that's your gas connected up. Next, what we can do, we can take two more cushions, put them out of the way. We put the spice rack up. 
this just has this slot here, just goes in the back of the cooker. Pick it up, press it in there, and that's your spice rack done. And if you come around the side, around by the gas pipe, this is the light socket there, so that just plunks in there. Again, just push in. If this powers these two lights here and that there, so if any of those lights don't come on, something to do with that socket there. <coughs> now, toilet side door. Lift this up, so we just pull it there. As it comes up to here, if you, I'm not sure how you want to film this one, just down here is a little clip. So we just pull that clip over, clip it in, and that's it, that'll stop the door falling over. And then fold this one up, fold it up here, turn that, so it kicks out, and there's another clip there. Just pushing out on the spice rack a little bit with my right hand to line it up, and that clips in. And then all of that now, nice and solid. That's all tied to that, and the spice rack's all good. You come this way, lift the toilet back up. Lift this, here. There's a little pop stud again here that we're going to put on with this. So if you put your hand around the back of the wardrobe, you can just put that on there. There you go, that's all clipped together. If you hide in the bed, I'll show how this gets clipped together now. Okay, so if we press that back and do this, a little clip up here, just goes on there. Oops. That goes there like that, and there's a second one here. And that's our toilet, nice and solid. Finally, toilet door. If we pick this up, this has a little white groove here. So we place the door so it goes inside of there, it sort of lines up. There we go. That's the hardest I've ever done. Okay, if we open the door, whilst holding just the frame at the minute, because this isn't clipped together. If you look in here, there's a little press stud we need to clip in there, that holds the door to the wall. And if you look around the other side, there's a little metal clip we just turn to there. And that's the frame on. There's another bit that will go up here in a minute, we will do that later though when we get to it. Okay, so now we back over this way final cushion, if we lift the table off and just move it to one side, we'll just move this up by the fridge so it's out of the way, we've got the cooker, sorry, sink, so this needs to go on the two white things there, but it goes behind this little bit, so if you just lift it over, go to that there. give it a shuffle with your hips, and that's it in place. And then if we look down the back, we need to connect up the water supply. So we've got a hot and cold pipe. The way you remember which way around it is, is that this is taped together with the cold pipe. So that just goes in the one nearest the electric, because they're taped together. So you push your electric in, which is the power for the pump. And then you just push the water in there. It just clicks in with a little click. Just press it down, nothing to do. Press that one in too. Clicked, in place. And that's our water done. After that, it's just a case of a range of cushions. So just put your cushion up there. That's the middle. You can lift this seat up if you want it there. And you always did. Put the seat up. And you fetch some cushions. And that's it. So, the next one, sorry, I forgot, we need to put this back on the toilet. So this, there's a little circle at one end, as you can see there, and there's the strap at the other, so the circle goes off to the right hand side. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to fit this. That's the awning carpet, by the way, that we all store in here. So, <laughs> I'll film this after we're done. Keep a 
that's my camera. So this piece of wood here, you just clip it in this end here, and then you're just trying to get all these down spikes in here. And at the end, you just put this pressed it in. And what this does is it just keeps all these three pieces together really secure so that the door doesn't rattle when you're moving it anymore. Okay, and then you shouldn't really see it from the outside, but that's all good. Next one is put your curtains up. So this is the biggest window on the right. So if you just look at the length of the curtains, that's the biggest. That's the next biggest. And then finally, you've got your toilet one in here. So when you're doing the toilet, you'll just see there's a little hook there. And that goes up to there. So just put your three levels of curtains in. And that is the point where you're sort of done. <laughs> Depends what you want to do next. So if you want to then connect up the water, I'll show you how you do your water and then how you prime it all. One more thing is you need to do the outside window supports. So these are the poles for the outside. If you sort of stand them all together, you see two that are the same size. Can't really get this in shot. You've got two that are basically the same size, a really tall one and a really short one. So the two that are the same size do the end windows by the beds. And then the really short one is for the toilet window and the really long window is for this window here by your kitchen. So I'll show you how you put those in now. Just feed it through the end. Pops in your little stopper at the end there, and then just push it in that way. There you go. So just repeat that for the other three windows. Okay, so typically I should have left you in this cupboard. You're going to have your water pose. So this end here goes in the side of the caravan and this here goes in your aqua roll or whatever water can you've got. So you basically take this one and I'll show you where you put that now. You go around the far side of the caravan to buy where the kitchen sink is. You'll see this here. There's no lock on this, you just pop it up and it just connects in here, like so. So you hear a little click and that's it done. So now that should, whatever this is connected to, it'll suck the water out of there and pass it into your taps whenever you turn your tap on. If you ever don't hear this motor go, just give this a bit of a pull it out and reconnect. It's just the two little metal terminals in there don't connect with these two properly. So just give it a wiggle and it should come fine. Okay, next we'll do the water weight. In the gas box here, you should find. Waste hose. So depending on the campsite you go to, some may give you a drain nearby, so that's what this really long black thing's for. If you don't have that, you can just pull it off. And what you do is that just goes in your waste master and these two go in the caravan. Like so. Pop this up here, just open the flap just push that in. That's the toilet sink isn't it? This one's for the toilet sink and up here this one here is for the kitchen sink and they both just get mixed together into the and your water goes out. Do you want to show them the cassette through that? Can do. Do that later. Okay. So finally with your sort of cold water connected what you now need to do, if you look under this seat, which is to the left of the kitchen hob, you just lift the seat up a minute. We have this is the hot water tank. Now, when you aren't using it and when you're driving, you need to drain this down. To drain it, you have these little screws on this side here and on that side there. 
so these should be up at the minute so what you do is you screw those down nice and tight until they're just finger tight and you can feel it stop like so like that so that's your hot water we'll now basically fill with water when you next try let me turn so, the hot water on by so what you need to do then you need to fill up the hot water tank first so if you just take the kitchen sink tap move it all the way to the top which is hot and then open it it will start sort of gurgling and spitting but I won't do it at the minute because there's no water barrel attached you'll just hear it fill up and that just sucks all the water through into the tank and then when you start seeing running water you can turn it off again and that means your water tank for hot water is then full and at that point it's safe to turn on the heater for it so you just turn that one on you'll see you get a little yellow light and that will start heating the water <coughs> um, when it's not in use it's up to you but turn it off so if you're using too much electricity at once and tripping the caravan site when you have the heater on and the hot water and so on and when you leave and you need to drain it don't you so you just empty the screws out yeah so before you leave one of the main steps you need to remember is you need to drain down that tank and make sure you empty the toilet but we'll show you how to fill the toilet up first next okay if you stop that that's up. Okay, so now to fit the electric, so electricity box is this one, so if you put the key in, half a turn to the left and the box should open. So you've got your leisure battery here which runs all your 12 volts if you don't want to plug into the mains, uh, otherwise has your main socket here. There's a little aerial point as well, so if you have a TV aerial you can plug it into here and what it does is it comes out inside the caravan and you connect your TV there wasn't anything we ever used so what you need to do is now connect the electric onto this one okay so the electric end that goes in the caravan is this one so that you basically have the little notch to the bottom place it in there push it up all the way and then your cap should clip on that's it and then if you just zoom out a little bit the wire needs to go down the back through this little groove here and then you can just close the box back up and then if you look inside on your caravan what you'll see here is that even though you're on the middle switch it'll show oh, green is full which means your caravan has now got electricity and if you push it down to van that just means the 12 volt leisure battery charges up at the same time and if you ever want a quick way of checking if the electricity is working just turn on the heater at the bottom there which it turns out we just knocked on but if you just hear that fan blowing at 240 volt okay so this is the chemical toilet so you have the cassette here so to pull the cassette out first of all you need to make sure that the toilet inside is fully closed i'll show you how that works in a minute once it's closed if you just lift up this bit here you can pull the whole cassette out this is the toilet. On here what you'll notice is we have this little bit here. So we use that when we're filling up. Um, so when you first use your toilet you need to put your, depending on what one you get, if you get a Thetford Blue, you just put your dose of Thetford Blue just in the end there. You can use that to measure it if you need to. Just screw that on, close it over, push it back in. And then this is how you fill up the flush water. So you pull this out open this, let's take the lid off, we put the little bit we just took from inside there because it just raises it up and then Michelle you need to come around to this side. If you put your pink dose of Thetford into the top here and then you can fill this up here and what you want to do is you want to fill, if you look up here you can see how full it is and this when it gets to about here is where you want to stop. Um, basically just look with, you don't want it to go past the line of here and that's when it's full enough. Once it's full, pop that out and do that. There's two ways of filling it, you can obviously just get a couple of bottles of water and fill it up um, or I used to cheat and just open the shower and then you can just use the cold tap of the shower to fill it up. Then once you've finished, push that just back in there, push that in, push that in and your toilet's ready to go. Stop. 
Okay, so your toilet is basically you have this handle here which opens and closes and your blue button here just applies some flush. So when you press this, this uses the pink flush water that you've just filled up. So press that a little bit to wash away whatever you've done and then just open the bottom to drop it through to the bottom and close it again. If that lever's not closed properly, you won't be able to pull the cassette toilet out, so make sure that's always closed. And that's it to the toilet. And if you enter, empty the flush, you just press and hold that down, don't you, when you leave in? Yeah, so when you're leaving the campsite, you need to make sure all the pink flush water's gone, so just keep pressing and holding that until it runs clean. So, for instance, we didn't empty it properly last time. There you go, that runs clear, and that's good to sort of leave the campsite. Um, as far as the sink, it's a sink, you've got a mixer tap. If you twist the end, you can get different sort of uh, water patterns as to whether you want a big spur or whether you want it to flower spray everywhere. Um, when you're emptying the sink, the hose pipe is there. And we were always told, basically, as you start tipping the sink back, just pulls it a quarter of the way to let the water drain from the back of it before pushing it all the way. And we used to just leave a little sort of sponge or cloth in there to mop up any drips. But that was basically the design of the way it was given to us from Pennoy. Just while I think about it, one thing I didn't cover is the fridge here. So this setting here is basically fridges off. If you do that one, it runs off electricity. If you do the battery symbol, that runs off the car battery when the car's connected, but it doesn't run off the leisure battery. And if you go to the bottom one, that runs off gas. So if you've got your gas bottle connected and turn it to the bottom one, it will just basically work off gas. It just lights itself and kind of works. I think there's a status indicator around somewhere. Yeah, so that one will turn green when it's working off gas. Oh, I think you press that button to light it. Best read the manual anyway, but it'll run off electricity or gas. We only ever really used it off electricity. Um, and then that's your, sorry, this one here is your thermometer for how cold you want it. And there's a little freezer box in the top right of it. It's good for freezing ice lollies and that kind of thing while you're away. So if you want the middle bed, um, you can do, you need to put this out of the way, pull this one down, oops, I'll just move that out of the way for the minute for the sake of the demo, but you would just fold that down the back, get your table, there's a little yellow lip on that side, drop your seat, drop it into place, and there you go. And what you do is just fold over your cushions. We always did them backwards just because they're a bit more level. Put that one there. Put that there. And there's your sort of big bed for the middle. Okay, so we didn't particularly like the sort of normal bed that comes with the Pennine because it was a bit tight for me the middle so we made this piece of wood here instead what this does if you leave this bit of seat up it goes down the middle here and you can lie the other way instead so there's two grooves cut out you just place that one in there place that one in there go to the other side and that just goes in there like that and then what we've got is in this cupboard here there are two legs that you sort of adjust the height, they just screw on under there, so you just do that to take the weight of it. And then you can just place these normal cushions, I should look at the other one. Oops. And there's this extra cushion here. So, and then that way you can have a bed that goes that way instead, which is sort of longer, a bit more space. Mm. Not so helpful, but the last thing I just thought after I've just packed all this down is that I haven't actually shown you where the fuse box is. So, if you ever use 
too much electricity on the campsite, you turn on your heater at the same time as you have an outdoor heater in the kettle or something, chances are you'll trip the campsite heater. So walk out to where you've plugged in your mains at the campsite. It's just got like a little RCD switch, flick it back up and don't use that much electricity again. Occasionally what will happen is you plug in a kettle in here and it will break your fuses instead. So just under this seat here is a fuse box same as you get in your house now and you'll just get like for the 240 volt system they're just little RCDs just flip them back up and don't use too much electricity again. As far as the 12 volt system are there's loads of little blades um, so if anything trips in the lighting stops working or the toilet pump stops working that all comes off the 12 volt system or if your water stops working uh, they're off the 12 volt system and you just have to check those fuses and work out what's gone wrong. Alright good luck. Okay, so your first note on putting it down, you want to take out your water pipe, take out your wastes, and then you want to go and drain the hot water inside, and you want to go and make sure you've emptied the toilet by just pressing and holding the flush till it runs clean. Once you've done that, you can then empty the cassette toilet, um, and then it's just a case of starting to put it all down. So the other useful thing to do at this point is disconnect your mains, just that box there and then if you make sure you move your switch in here to the middle position so you don't flatten your battery once your mains is disconnected. When you're on a campsite and you've had all your hot water on your left hand side so just underneath your sort of cooker and stuff this is your hot water tank so you need to there's these two little screws here that one and that one so you need to undo them until basically they sort of pop up to where they are now if you can see I've obviously not had this full and all the water will drain out of this you'll just hear a dripping from the outside and this empties your tanks so that it doesn't freeze over winter and it doesn't spill when you're driving around so when you're doing that make sure your water heaters off as well at the front okay you need to pull all the little white poles that are in these window ends out and there's four of them and then just take them inside because they go inside when you're packing up. So first thing when you start putting it down is attach all of these things so that your mattress stays in when you fold the top over. So you need to unzip the white thing there and then these just pull out the back. And then if you do the same at the other end as well. So pull this down, make sure your windows are up as well if you've had the windows open. Just sit those back. So as I'm recording this, I forgot to actually take the curtain poles down. So these should all be taken down and stored in one of the ed bed ends before you actually fold this up. There's Michelle hiding because she forgot to. So yeah, we'll take those down now, put them there before we carry on folding up the caravan. As you can see, poles just generally go down here on the right hand side. So to start packing this up, you take your left cushion from up here, shove it in the middle. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the sink down in that space. So down the back here you will have, I've not bothered, but you'll have your hot tap, your cold tap and the electricity for the pump. So the way you remember which is which, this cable is the nearest one fits that way. So the water with the white has the electricity. So those two you pull out, put them over there and then we're going to lift the whole lot up and plunk it down there. Right, to remove the toilet door, you need to open the toilet door. Inside here, you get this bar here, this needs to come off, so you pop that up, lift this off. You can put this down the side here. I'm going back in the toilet door, get a clip down here on the right, just pull that out of the way. And on your left hand side down here, there's a little button. And if you step out again, close the door. You can then just lift the door out of this little nook down here. Okay, and that's going to go over the beds at the end, but we need to just lift it out of the way for the minute. So we'll start folding the toilet down. So if you look on the back of the toilet, if you sit on the sort of main bed, you need to undo this clip undo this one and then that falls apart onto these little two black bits here 
so now we're ready to fold it down so in here you can normally put your big water cylinder which is your aqua roll that can normally fit in there with the carpet or at least it did for us so pop off this clip fold this down see there's a little metal bit there that that rests on and once you've done that this here from the cooker folds over the top so we undo this little clip here if you look at the back where my left is there's another little metal clip that undoes and there's another one down here at the back of the cooker and this should just all fold down nice and neatly that does that now what we do is we can take this spice rack off and then we can move the cooker down there. The spice rack has a little electric plug down here, so before you lift the spice rack off, make sure you unplug that and just pull it out of the way. To remove the gas cooker, you just pull down on this little bit. There's a little bit there if you hold where the red thing is, and then you can just lift the pipe out, and then the pipe clips around the back out the way over there and then it's good to lift the cooker off. Once you get to this bit where you've got your cooker down, you've shoved a little cushion down the side to stop it rocking around. This one's your smaller cushion. That's the bigger cushion. That's just another one of the seats. What we do is we put the table upside down over the top of this to protect it so that nothing smashes the glass. So when it's all packed down, you put the toilet door sort of like that Put the spice rack like that. I always use one of the cushions just to stop that rubbing and doing that. The other thing I always use to wrap the spice rack in one of the kids sleeping bags. Just the spice rack doesn't rub on the door when it's packed up. Um, but yep this is what it should all look like. So then over this way what we now need to do is we lift this big wardrobe back down. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you unplug the little electric down there just clip it away and then this just slides over to here and we lower it down which I can't really do whilst I'm filming myself there you go so I couldn't really show you that but you slide it across this bracket here when it's in the middle you just drop it forward and it comes down like that and I generally push it over as far as I can so that you can put the awning poles here and then what we're going to do is we'll put the awning in the middle um, one thing to note is that if you look here i've got little stickers that's because this will rub on there if you're not careful and it's damaged the wood a little bit so maybe don't push it over too far we'll just put a cushion down this bit here right so for the last pole we just sorry last panel unclip that and it drops down and there you go that is the entire thing ready to go so now all we need to do is you go along from the front to the back for all these metal poles and you just drop all these down and then it's good to fold up so this is what it should look like when you're done inside just a little clip then so that's your awning and there's your pegs down there and your poles sorry the pegs are in the gas cupboard normally by default it's up to you where you want to leave them so as you're getting out you want to make sure that this is in the middle which is the electricity supply so you can either turn it to car if you want it powered by your car when you're driving along the only advantage of that is if you have opened it up you can then use your fridge off the car and so on but it's not really worth it to be honest so we always just turn it off the other one is if it's on van that runs off the internal battery so any lighting that gets left on it will flatten your battery so if you turn it to the middle then it's just off and then everything's safe and off one thing just to put your step and the electricity lead in here and then shut up and then we'll start going from the front to the back of getting all the poles down so to start taking the pole down what you want to do is you want to undo all the little bungee cords along the side of the front as you're going just unclip them all so the whole thing's loose and just undo all the velcro that's folded along here so we'll just have a check of that and then if you fold all the corners over like that 
then it just means it's stretchy. Undo the Velcro at the end. Cool. Pop that out, lift the corner over, just that it's on the inside of that metal bracket. Pull the Velcro off. Good thing to check you've taken your window poles out at this point. I have. And do some more of the bungees. Fold that up there. Okay, and then what you want to do is get two of you so that one's on each side. And then you just want to be dropping down this metal pole. So there's a little button there, you press it in and it falls down. And then if two of you do that together, then the poles don't get twisted. So I'll go and get my shell. So now that all your poles are down, what we need to do is basically lift up all these sides here and just push them onto the top. So these bits here, as I said before, need to all be lifted up. I obviously missed a corner. And what we can do, we just lift all this up, like so, all the way along. And when you get to the end, you can just give it a tug over. Tuck that one over, and then you should see that I'll pull it all in. Any extra bits. Push back up, just so it's high up. And then just square it off again at that end. You should have it like that, and then everything's up, so there's nothing dangling down the side, and then it fold up really easy. Okay, so when you're folding it up, you fold the front end first, which is by the tow bar. So all we do is, if you look under here, you've got two bits of Velcro on the, on the. So we just unravel that. And the tip we always got was leave this rolled up, sort of in reverse, so that you can just unravel it the next time really quickly. I undo this side. Roll that one up. And then it's really easy, just with one hand, just start pushing it over your head, and it goes back. And that's it, it's folded down really easy. Push the little bit of bed in, it catches up. If you've not strapped your bed down, this starts folding down now, and you'll regret it. So just push that down, clip this in place. There you go, it's clipped in nice and easy. This one on the front left side by the door is occasionally a bit stiff. Not quite worked well, if you just sort of push it at the end it tends to come okay. And then do the same for the other. Do you want two pieces of Velcro again? There you go. Just folds over, nice and simple. Pull it down, move the little clip, and then you can either put bikes and stuff in here. There's some uh, bubble wrap around we'll give you. Um, otherwise, just fold this bar over, and then we're just ready to put the cover on. So the cover is, you just undo this bit down here, pop it back on. There's a little clip up here. Michelle's doing the same on the opposite side. This bit's helpful if you've got two people. Roll it back out. And just start unfolding it. Okay, and then you just go round clip on all these pieces. At this point you can fold in the bed end, so you've got the bed support, so there's a little clip here, move it around, in the 12 o'clock position, same that one, 
you just start pushing in a little bit and then move it back to the six. Like so, then as you push forward, you want it to just lock on this little bolt here. So if you push forward, you'll just see it snap there, and that's it done. So then the last step we've got is just to raise up the legs, and you're done. Um, the only other final check that's worth noting is just make sure you walk this all pushed down and locked tight so it doesn't flap around. Shower's locked. When Toilet doors all shut. And that's it.